Okay, welcome to episode eight. Uh, this is where things start to get a little bit of fun because now we're going to start going through editing. We've kind of shown you the layout of, of Premiere and getting things set up to start editing. And now we're actually going to start getting into editing. One thing I want to talk about is if you are doing some editing at home and you have a computer that you have a secondary monitor plugged into, if you have a computer, of course you have your one display, and then if you have a second display that you want to play your video full screen to, I've seen where people will grab their program window and just drag it over the second window and then make it look big but it still doesn't really technically count as full screen because it, you'll see the edges of your program monitor. If you want to play your video footage full screen to your secondary monitor you can go up to Premiere Pro to up to the preference settings and go under playback. First of all you have to have the monitor plugged in and turned on before you turn on Premiere and so in some instances you might even have to reset your computer with the uh, monitor plugged in. And once you have a dual screen layout set up where you have a secondary or extended desktop monitor loaded on your PC or Mac, you'll go up to the preferences on a Mac, it's under Premiere Pro CC, on a PC the preferences are found under the edit drop down menu, and you're going to go down to playback. Right now I've got a secondary monitor plugged in here. So under playback you'll see, actually you'll see, first of all see this Adobe DV thing right here, which is kind of ancient and hardly anybody uses this anymore. If it's if you've got a DV device like a camera uh, that uses FireWire, you can check mark that and it will send the video full screen through the FireWire device that can then plug into an old fashioned television. Once again, kind of ancient. But right here you've got Adobe Monitor 1, that's the one that I'm working on right here, and Adobe Monitor 2 is my secondary monitor I have to the right. You guys won't be able to see this because I'm on a single mon I'm recording a single monitor, but you'll check mark that and hit OK. Once you do that, any video that you have in your source monitor or in your program monitor, whatever you're playing back, will show full screen to your secondary device, to your secondary monitor. Okay, so let's get into editing here. First of all, I'm going to open a folder with a bunch of footage here, and I'm going to show the thumbnail here and I'm gonna do tilde over the window so it goes full screen and zoom up on these a little bit. So first of all when you want to just start editing what you can simply do is select the clip that you want actually you don't have to select it you just move hover over it and double click on it and it will load it into your source monitor up here and get it ready for editing. Now if you also want to select clips on a list basis here if you show by list view and then from the list view here if you want to select a clip you can simply just use your arrows up and down to select the clip that you want, and it will show a little thumbnail up in the corner here, uh, the clip that you're choosing. And then if you simply hit Shift O, it will load that clip into the monitor that you have selected. If you want to go down and choose another, you can simply go back down into your bin here, and you can select the one that you want, and do Shift O, and it will load it into the monitor again. Once you have a clip loaded in your monitor, let me go for a wider shot here. I'm going to hit Shift O and open up this clip right here. Now realize that you have your clips that are all raw footage and you can kind of skim through those. You have, you have excess footage like here you see the slate. I'm going to press play and it plays through it. I'm going to hit L and forward a few times and get to the part where I want him. Let's say I want him to walk into the screen here. So he walks out and right when he is out, I'm going to use my frame by frame here. Press play. You hit J, K, L, J to rewind, K to stop and I can see his hand just kind of sticking in the shot there and say I want him to completely clear the frame. I'm just going to hit arrow back a few times and now if I want that that's where I want it to exactly to start. I want it to start on that frame right now. All you have to do is hit I for endpoint. There's also the little endpoint and outpoint markers down here. You don't even have to use those. You just hit I on your keyboard and it sets an endpoint. And here's all the excess footage that I did not use. Right now it's got an endpoint all the way to the end and I've got uh, 42 seconds of a shot there. So I'm going to play this, move to where I want this to cut. When he settles, right there. And if I want to fine tune this, I can just use my arrows back and forth to set that and get it exactly on the frame where I want. I'm going to get this right where he kind of holds still here, right when his hands come to a stop, right there, and O for out point. So pretty simple. You set I for in point, you hit O for out point, and now I've got this range. It's 3 seconds and 18 frames right here, this range set for uh, cutting this clip. Basically all this excess will, it's its not deleted permanently, but it will not be placed under the timeline. And then I've got all the footage right, and then all this excess footage that I don't need right there. First of all I'm going to go in, I'm going to grab a clip and I'm going to make my timeline here. I'm going to drag this and drop it into my timeline, create a timeline. I can delete that footage now and I've got my timeline. I'm going to actually take that timeline out of my folder right there and I'm going to call this edit. 
So I know that's my edit timeline right there. So now I've got this endpoint out point set on this clip. And now if I want to put this down inside the timeline, that portion that I've edited, I just simply put period for overwrite. So let me hit period. That is my shortcut. And it drops it down into my timeline. This only has video on this clip here. So uh, let me zoom up on this. I'm going to hit shift plus to kind of increase my track size there so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And there's the clip from beginning to end placed into my timeline. There are two options here. You have got your period and your comma. And the comma is shortcut for insert. The period is shortcut for overwrite. We're going to go over the difference between those. So uh, let's do some basic editing here uh, beforehand. Let's go to another clip. I'm going to go to a close up here when he steps into the shot. I'm going to match cut this when he steps into the shot to a close up of his face. So I'm going to go back to my icon viewer here and there's a shot of a close up right there. Got all this excess footage with the slate in it. So I'm going to cut from this shot to this shot. So I'm going to find the portion that I want to use. I'm going to play through this. Find the portion where he stops blinking. He's got a reflector in his eyes right there. Endpoint. Press play. See, he blinks a little bit right there. So I'm going to change my endpoint here. I'm going to do it after the blink. And all I have to do to reset an endpoint as I play is hit I again. And it took away that old one and replaced the new endpoint for where the playhead exists. I'm going to play through this. Right there, I like that blank. Out point, I'm going to place that down on my timeline. You can do one of two ways here. You can just grab the image itself and drag it and drop it down inside like that. I'm going to undo that. Command Z or Control Z. Or you can just hit period. Period will place it where your playhead is. Notice my playhead is not on the end of the clip. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my timeline by hitting Shift 3. I'm now in my timeline and hit End. Now I am at the end of my timeline. So now I'm going to hit period and it drops the next clip into my timeline. So basically the process is you double click on a shot, play through it, in point, out point, period. Double click, in point, out point, period is a simplified editing. It's kind of the simplified ed version of editing there. Let's play through this timeline and watch our edit here as it plays through and cut to our close-up. There we go. Quick little item here for navigating in your source monitor here while you're editing, while you're doing your, pre your pre kind of preliminary edits here, is using your numpad. I'm going to play through this here. And uh, say we want this shot where he pulls the gun out of the holster here. That's a little western. So right when he reaches for it, he yanks that out there. And say I want a couple frames beforehand. I'm going to arrow back until he gets that gun in the holster right there. But now say I want a pre-roll of about two seconds. If I want to pre-roll this two seconds, I can easily hit arrow left or back. Let's say five seconds, five or six seconds, maybe seven seconds back. Uh, all you have to do on your numpad is you hit the key minus, and you'll notice up here it brings up a little minus in this little playhead position, and then I can say six. Hit return. It just took that back six frames. And now I can hit I and put an endpoint if that's where I want it to start. If you do the plus button, you'll notice the plus pops up here. And now you can say plus six frames. You'll jump six frames forward. Just kind of a quick little way of getting exact frames there. If you want to go back 15 frames, negative 15, it jumps back 15 frames. A little hint here, if you want to go back, say, a second and 15 frames, you can do negative one for the second. And then you add a period. The period is a placeholder for two zeros. So if you do one period, it'll be two zeros, which stands for the frames. Or if you do another period, if you have two periods there now, it is one minute, zero seconds, and zero frames. Or only one, and you very rarely do that. So I'm just going to do negative one point, well actually we'll say 115. That goes back, sorry, negative 115. That goes back one second and 15 frames. If you wanted to jump back one second exactly, or forward one second exactly, negative one point. If you just do negative one, it goes one frame, but a negative one point takes you back one second. Positive one point takes you forward one second. So kind of a quick way of adding some, uh, some frames onto your clip there. As we mentioned, a couple ways of, of getting this down in the timeline is you can simply grab the image and drag it down inside. Or you can grab this little video symbol right there, drag that down inside. If you this doesn't have audio on it, you could grab the audio and drag that. It would only grab audio down inside. But the easiest way of doing that is just hitting comma or period. Period doesn't overwrite. Let's show you what a comma does. Now a comma is going to, let's get the playhead between two shots here. Say we want to insert a shot right here of him reaching for the gun. I'm going to arrow back, or arrow up, sorry, and it jumps back to this edit right there. I got the playhead exactly on the point that I want it to be, where I want to insert a shot here. You hit comma, watch what it does. 
It's coming down here on the timeline. Look. Sorry, that's quite a, quite a long shot. Let's get a little shorter shot here. Out point. There we go. Now I hit comma, and look what it does. It inserts the shot here and shoves everything else on the timeline over to the right, inserting that shot. Watch what the overwrite does. Hit period. It eats into the footage as long as this clip is. That ate over the entire clip right there because this is longer than the clip that was below it. So the overwrites overwrites things in its path. So it's okay to hit overwrite if you're at the end of the playhead or end of the, end of the timeline, but if you hit overwrite and there's a clip in the way, it's going to eat over it. That leads into kind of why you would want to use an overwrite here. Let's go back up. I'm going to get a little shot of my hand here. This is, works better with uh, documentary and news footage and news stories, but it, there's also instances where you might want to use a cutaway in film. But I'm going to put an in point just right where he grabs the gun. This won't really make sense where I'm putting this, but I'm going to show you what an overwrite does. Down here you have track assignments. Uh, right now I don't have an audio clip here, or this would show an audio tab right here as well. Right now it's just showing this video tab. I'm going to import some footage. Here's a clip that has some audio on it here. This has an audio track that belongs with it. But say we want to insert the video and the audio here, or we want to overwrite it. Right now, with this video clip loaded, it's asking, where do I want the, to place this video when I hit period? Do I want it, or comma, do I want the video track here and audio track here? We could actually grab this video and assign it up to this track. Now as we hit period, it'll take this in and out point up here that I have, in and out point, and drop it on this track right here and here without eliminating this clip. It leaves that clip alone right below it and we have reassigned the tracks there. So that's a, if you want your audio to go to a different track as well. Let me undo. I'm going to pull this down here and say I want it to go to that one. Say I've got audio on this track right here. Now I can hit period and it drops it down onto this track instead. So these are basically track assignments where you want them to go when you're editing. If it's on the same track, your overwrite will overwrite clips in front of it. If you move it up like this to where there are no video clips, you can hit period and drop it in, and there you go, and that's an overwrite. Otherwise, if you hit insert, look what it does. It cuts that clip right there and shoves it over and does an insert, which is helpful when you're editing on the same track, but if you're editing on a different track, you will likely need to use overwrite. Okay, let's show you how to clear endpoints and outpoints up here in your source monitor. We showed you that you can hit I and it will reset your endpoint or hit, you can do the same with O as well, and you can reset your outpoint wherever you position, reposition your playhead. If you want to clear everything up here, you can right click and you can go to clear in and out right down here. There's also a shortcut for this. If I hit that, notice it clears the in and out points. Undo that. You can also, on a Macintosh, you can hit option X. It will clear it. That's the shortcut. On a PC, it is Control shift x Those ones are pretty different there, but if you hit Option-X on a Mac, it'll clear it, and Control shift x on a PC will clear that. Okay, now that I've got a clip up here with video and audio, I'm going to put an in point and out point. And if you want to bring the video down, as mentioned, you can grab just the video here, drag that down inside, or if you want to bring just the audio, you can grab this and drag this down inside. And that's how that works. It'll bring those channels separately. If you want to bring them both at once, you can just grab the image itself, drag it, and drop it down inside your timeline. Otherwise, you can just hit period or comma. And I've got my track assigned up here, so I'm going to reset that right there, undo, and drop it down in, and it's on the proper track there. So say here we want to show a shot. We want to cut from here to a shot of him uh, pulling the gun out. We're going to find that footage of him pulling the gun out right there. I'm going to set my in and out point, which I already have one, but I'm going to find a different shot here. So right there, he yanks his hand out, and let's have it right when he starts reaching. See, now I'm going to hit minus 5, return, and it goes back 5 frames. In point, now I've got a 5 second, negative 5 frame pre-roll. He grabs the gun, out point, and that's my shot right there. Hit period, drop it into my timeline. So now after this part, we have him grabbing the gun, pulling it out. Okay, so once we drop a shot, let me delete this and show you once what, watch what happens once we drop a shot down inside. I'm going to hit period, drop it down. Say we want to preview this edit right here. What you can do is hit shift K. What the shift K will do is take it back to the previous edit and it will play through that to the new clip. So once you drop a clip in here, let me get rid of that. So I undo, drop it back in. Now my edit's done. Now if you hit shift K, it's what's called a play through. It takes it back about five seconds and plays through the past five seconds from where your playhead is. It's just a quick way. You can, you can just grab it and play it like this just to preview your edit. Or the easy way to do it is Shift-K. Takes it back five seconds, plays through the edit, 
and then you can see your edit all finished. Now it plays through the edit so you can see how everything, how everything looks. So kind of a cool little shortcut there. Once you drop in a, an edit, say we just dropped in this edit right here, you can hit Shift-K, goes back, and previews the edit. And there you go. So here's our whole clip. He walks in, cut to the close-up, cut to the gun getting pulled, and there you go. So once again, the basic process is just simply double-click, set your endpoint, set your out point, I and O, endpoint, out point, and hit period or comma. Period for overwrite, which is this shortcut, or which is this button right here, or insert, comma. So insert, comma, period for overwrite. And then insert will shove everything else over. Overwrite will eat into things in its way. And that's basic editing, and we'll start getting into more advanced editing in episodes to come.